viewers, thanks for tuning in for today's um, program, Prayer Time with God. Today we have um, a guest in the house. We have a woman of God in the house, Pastor Annie Boko. You're welcome, my God bless you. It's a privilege and an honor to be here. And I'm so looking forward to our time together today. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, pastor Annie is a church planter. She's a pastor. She's an intercessor, a prophetess, and a teacher of the word. Um, today, God has brought her in our midst because we've had a lot of questions, you know, coming in from the viewers. And we are pleased today to be used of God to give the viewers some of the answers to these questions. But before we go into today's discussion, as we know, we uh, have our sister here, my partner in the ministry, my co-laborer in Christ, Sister Victoria Richards. God bless you, ma'am, for coming. Thank you. We are going to be ushered into the presence of God through worship, as always, and we're gonna uh, give our sister time to take us into God's presence. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 If you could open your Bible to John 15, um, we're going to be going through the scriptures, uh, verses through 4 through 9 or 11, 4 through 11, John 15. He who abides in me, and I in him, there's much fruit, there's much fruit, if anyone is like a branch that's withered, a branch that's withered, abide in me, Jesus said.
these things I've spoken that my joy may If you love me, keep my commandment. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you. Even the spirit of truth. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Jesus said, Abide in me. Abide in me. my father is glorified that you bear much fruit my father is glorified that you bear much We bless God for that uh, worship time. We give God all the glory. We worship his holy name. Amen. For he alone is worthy of our worship. Amen. Amen. You're welcome, ma'am. <laughs> um, we've been receiving a lot of questions from our viewers. You know, uh, somebody called in and um, he's a student. And he's really going through a lot at this time in his life. And um, he said um, he's a Christian. He's a believer. Um, in fact, his father is a pastor. You know, and uh, he said he loves prayers so much. But he's been going through a lot lately, financially and um, academically in so many areas of his life. And um, he said... He, he discovers that he really wants to pray. He really wants to spend time in the presence of God. He really wants to, you know, practice God's presence. But he discovers that every time he's before the Lord trying to pray, he finds out that his mind keeps wandering. His mind keeps going to his needs, you know, the things that he's going through, and he cannot really concentrate. So the first question we have for you today, ma'am, is how can one keep his mind from wandering while praying? Well, there's a question. So first of all, we need to de define what prayer is. And if you want to put it in a nutshell, I think for me, my simplest definition is talking to God 
or communicating with God. And so we want to keep in mind when we come to pray, that is why we're there. We want to talk to God and we want to listen to God. And sometimes we might run out of our own words to say, but then we can be quiet and listen to him. And I know that everything in the world will try to press in and distract us and pull us away from that place, but we just want to hear what he, we, we need to hear what he has to say to us. And so we have to find a way to not be distracted. Maybe it involves uh, going to a quiet place. Maybe it involves, uh, I know a mom that had a bunch of kids and she could never any, have any time for herself for prayer, but she discovered that when she was in the shower, nobody could interfere and distract her there. It was her and God and a bunch of running water, and that's always a good combination. So, you know, um, we have to find the place that works for us. If you can't do an hour, do a minute. Take that minute and make it count for something. And then maybe later in the day, you can find a couple more somewhere. Mainly don't beat yourself up for what you're not doing. Just be thankful that your heart wants to go there. And as you begin to learn what works for you and which every day is different, every situation is different. What worked on Tuesday might not work on Friday morning or Thursday night. But find what works at that moment. Maybe you're stopped at the traffic light. I'll tell you what, if you start praying, it'll go by faster and pretty soon they'll be honking at you to go. But the main thing is determining why you're doing it. You want to communicate with God. It's not one way, it's not petition only, but it's listening and it's so much more, which we'll probably hit on that in a couple of other places before we're finished, but maybe that'll help a little. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Wow. Hmm. I'm learning too. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning every day. Yes, ma'am. Um, then um, we had another question. Um, a lady called in. And um, she wanted to know, because she finds herself repeating herself in prayers, especially when it seems like the answers to her prayers are not coming, you know. And then she asked me, she said, woman of God, um, is it necessary to repeat same request in prayer over and over, you know, especially when it seems like it's taking a very long time for the answers to come? So that's our next question for you today, ma'am. Well, there's times when we don't see results to our prayers. But I believe that when we pray, whether we're on a mountaintop shouting to all of creation or whether we're in our most quiet place and with our blanket up over our head, tucked up in a little you know, ball in our bed. Uh, we're going to pray different ways. We might be praying for the same thing, but in one case we might be proclaiming the answer, declaring and decreeing. And in another case we might be, you know, whispering quietly, God, do you think we could do this? We really need, I really feel like we need to do this. Do you think that would, will that work with you? How should I pray for this? Hmm. And the thing is to remember, we have a guide that tells us when to pray and what to pray and how to pray. He is the Holy Spirit. When he prompts us to pray, even if we just prayed 10 minutes ago in the kitchen and now we're out in the garage mm -hmm. emptying the trash, if he brings that to you again, pray. Who cares if you just prayed? Maybe you need to reinforce that. Maybe you need to show the powers that be that you're serious and you mean it. And there might be other times when something that's really heavy on your heart, you, uh, you don't even pray for it for a long time and then you're feeling like, oh, I'm not praying enough. Well, you might not be if the Lord's telling you to and you're not, but unless he brings it to you and tells you to do it in that moment, maybe... I think the Holy Spirit is the one that directs how often we pray. And I don't think you can ever pray too much, but how? What inflection, what emphasis in this moment? I have a son who's been missing 
for almost 25 years out of my life. And I pray for him all kinds of different ways. Mm -hmm. And then a few decades went by where, it, well, not a few, but one at least, where it seemed like I hardly ever prayed, but I was resting in the peace that God was in charge. Mm. And then a flurry of activity became uh, into my life again when we heard some news and I just wanted to jump on it and hit it. And right now, you might laugh at me, but it works for me, is because I sometimes need a prompt, Mm. every time I hear a train go by, I pray for him. And it can be on TV or it can be a train on the railroad right outside my car window or a train in the distance. When I hear that train, I use it as a prompt to pray for my loved ones, this one especially. Praise God. Wow, what a wonderful answer. Thanks for all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we had another question. I'm going to interrupt you, but I just want to say trial and error. You know, I don't know if I'm always doing it right. I got a book. I got a book, and I know in here all the answers that I need, but I don't always know their address. I don't know exactly where it is. Mm. But if I'm quiet and listen, I know that the Lord will bring me what I need to know in that moment. Amen. It's very exciting. Use the user's manual. Amen. Amen. Sorry Praise for interrupting, God. my dear. It's okay. All it's right. okay, ma'am. Um, well, uh, it's just because of time, I'm trying to push as many questions. You know, oh, because yeah, go. We have a lot of questions, you know, people just calling in and asking, okay. you know, questions on prayers because it's like a lot of people are stuck. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, the next question we have is um, somebody called in and asked, what is the best position to pray? I would have to say the one you're in at the moment. I mean, really, if we're to pray without ceasing, that means that any time of night or day, we're going to be in some position. And if we're praying without ceasing, that's the position we're going to be in. I'm not being funny, but it's true. And obviously, we're not praying every minute of the day in terms of being on our knees and folding our hands beside our bed and saying, you know, now I lay me down to sleep. But even when we're not saying a word, our spirit is connected. Mm. We're networking with the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, honey, I want to be on top of that mountain, mm. proclaiming it to mm. all hearers, mm. be they good, bad, or ugly, or whatever. I want them to know what's in my spirit right now. Mm. And other times, I'd rather nobody knew what I was praying because that moment might be when I'm confessing my sins. And, honey, you don't need to know what they are. Mm. But believe me, I got a few here and there. Mm. And I pray about them. Mm. And uh, I pray about them sometimes pounding the carpet because I can't believe. I, I just want to get as low as I can. Mm. Other times I'm on the carpet because I'm in adoration, or I simply can't stand. There was a time in my life when the Spirit of God was hovering around so close all the time that, I kind of had a rule that unless I needed to be standing up for some reason, I was going to be on the floor. Mm. And that passed, that time passed, that was a season. Have you discovered there's seasons in God? There might be a season of running and leaping and praising God, and there might be a season of gut, grabbing your gut because you're wretched, you're praying for our nation, you're concerned about a loved one or a health issue, That's where true. it's not appropriate to be throwing your hands in the air and spinning and dancing and twirling around. Or maybe that's the very moment we need to do that. We need to bring some joy into a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know the position, you've got two choices. You can stay in the one you're in when the mode of prayer comes to you, mm -hmm. or you can change it according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. But you can't miss God, beloved. Hallelujah. You cannot. <laughs> he loves you. He's called you to this. He's asked you to ask. And you can't miss him. Praise God. Amen. Wow. I love the last statement. You can't miss God. He Amen. loves you no matter what. Amen. Amen. And then somebody else called in because I've had a bunch of questions. Trust me, since we have been on this prayer time with God program, my life has been transformed myself All because right. of the questions that, you know, ke you know, kept rolling in and coming in and, you know, people really want to you know, be clear about some issues, you know, that they've been struggling with all their lives as Christians, and we thank God that we are a blessing. Amen. Then somebody else called in, and um, with this question, she wanted to know, you know, why 
we require to pray. Since God already knows our need. Oh, I why love do it. We, why do we require to pray? Since God knows everything, he's all-knowing. He's all-knowing God, and he knows our needs. He knows what we need at every point in time in our lives. So why do we require to, why are we required to pray? Why do we need to pray? Well, because we're waiting for an answer. Mm. And so, you know, it says you have not because you ask not. Mm. So you ask once and you ask in faith and you're believing God and you're standing and believing God. But what about that, what about that widow that went to that judge and she kept going back and back and he didn't want to talk to her. He was busy sleeping. Wow. The last thing in the world he wanted to do was take care of this widow's need. But she just kept going and she didn't give up. And she didn't care if she just asked him five minutes before. She kept going and knocking on heaven's door. Not to be thinking of any songs in particular, but, you know, knocking on heaven's door, asking, asking, requesting, uh, making our needs known. He tells us to do that. Mm. He tells us uh, to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That if you never know what to pray, that you can pray that every time mm -hmm. because we don't always know what his will is. We each have our special, you know, verses and our special doctrine that we love and our favorite way of doing things. But then we have the Holy Spirit who doesn't necessarily have a favorite. He is here to reveal to us the need of the moment according to God's heart. And so he might want, we kind of covered this in the repetition thing, but we pray different ways. Because the need of the moment changes. There's only one thing that never changes, and that's Jesus Christ. Mm. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. But our circumstances are constantly in flux, and we're constantly having to step up to the need of the moment. And so we ask, five minutes later, the need's changed. Maybe part of that's already been answered, or maybe it got worse. Mm. Heaven help us. But then we slightly change the way we pray. The main thing is, being open to allow the Holy Spirit to show us how to do it. Hmm. Praise God. Well, because of our time, we can only take one more question, and then um, we'll... I think we need you to come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because well, we have a lot of questions. So the last question for today, because of our time, is when there are so many pressing needs and activities, how does one find time for meditation and prayers. Well, honey, all I can tell you is we all have the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours a day. So somewhere in those 24 hours, it's important to set aside a segment. And it can be an hour or it can be a minute. I think I mentioned that earlier. Mm. There might be a time when the circumstances of our life are such because of children or job requirements or traffic or whatever, where we can only stay with it for a few seconds or a moment or two. There's other times when we can carve out a whole chunk. I, my personal habit is after I wake up and refresh myself in the morning, I go and I get my little journal and I shut up for a minute and I mm. let God tell me something, anything he wants. Mm. And then I write it down. And from there, I kind of know where we're going to go in prayer at that moment. But time, sometimes I need to jump up and take off and take care of a job or take care of some pressing issue or whatever it is. And so I only have a minute, but then later in the day, I have a nap. I like naps now that I'm a little, uh, well, we won't go there, but I like naps better than <laughs> I did a few decades ago. And, uh, you know, before a nap, after a nap, I'll tell you when God's times are in my life is as I'm drifting off to sleep, that's his time. Mm. And I like to drift off to sleep in him, mm. being so aware that I'm in him. And I like to wake up in the same place in him, mm -hmm. knowing I'm with him and in him. And he can talk. And then, so a nap, that just gives you two, two more opportunities of the day. <laughs> and, you know, we might be watching TV and I might doze off. Well, I probably didn't doze off in him. But when I wake up, it's like, I got to check my, not my email. I got to check my God mail. Mm -hmm. I got to see if he's <laughs> left me any messages while I was away. Hallelujah. So I hope these things have been helpful to you. I'll be delighted to come and share more. But, honey, I didn't learn this in Bible college. I didn't learn this at Holy Spirit University. Well, maybe a little bit there. 
But I learned this by trial and error. Mm. I've learned what works and doesn't work for me. Mm. And I learned a long time ago, I can't please everybody. The one I'm trying to please is my creator, my beloved, the ones that created me for his pleasure. But in closing, I want to read one scripture to you in Ecclesiastes 11, verse 6. And it just says, Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or the other. You don't know which thing that you're praying and doing that God might bless and touch at that moment. Just be busy, be praying as much as you can. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I want to really thank you so much, ma'am, for coming because I've been blessed, and if I'm blessed, I know the viewers are also blessed. And our prayers is that the Lord we keep pouring into you his wisdom, his knowledge, his person, his unction, his anointing. How? In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, I know what I want to say next Amen. time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for listening, <laughs> beloved. Amen. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in with us today. And uh, we want you to look forward to our next program on prayer time with God because we have a lot of vital questions to handle next time. Questions like, are there prayers God refuses to hear? Are there prayers that don't work? How can we hear God's voice or to know God's will? What do I do when I don't feel an answer to my prayers? Why do we pray in Jesus' name? And why do we need the help of the Holy Spirit to pray. We have a lot of questions to discuss about next time, and I know you want answers to these questions. So we expect you to tune in next time on Prayer Time with God. God bless you.